On this week's MetPy Monday, we'll learn how to use the multiprocessing module to help speed up things like this satellite plotting script. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to take this simple satellite plotting script that takes about a little over two minutes to run on my system and give it about a two and a half time speed up to run in just under one minute on my system by using Python's multiprocessing module. First, let's take a look at the script that we're starting with. So we're going to be using Cartapy and DateTime and Matplotlib, of course, because we're going to be making plots of satellite data and putting a timestamp on it. And then we're going to be using MetPy's color tables and of course Siphon to go retrieve that remote data. One thing that I've done in this program already that's a good idea to do in your programs is to make a function that does my plotting. So for example, here I have this function plot data set that takes a data set object and then it does all of the standard plotting that we've talked about in other MetPy Mondays. So in this case, it's going to get the remote access URL. We're going to pull out what we need in terms of X, Y, and the data variable, the projection, make our figure, add the subplot, do a little bit of modification of the spacing around the subplot to make this look nice as a saved PNG. Go ahead and show the data, set the color map and the norm. We can do things like add borders and state borders. Then we're going to be putting a timestamp onto the plot. And finally, saving it out. So we're going to say the file name is going to be image underscore and then whatever the data set name is, dot PNG. And we'll return the file name just as good practice so the function returns something relevant to what it just did. So Initially, you might not have that as a separate function. You might have that all in the body of a loop, let's say. And it's really better to go ahead and break that out into a separate function as it makes it more portable, it's easier to troubleshoot, and in this case, as you'll see, it makes it very easy for us to go ahead and parallelize this with multiprocessing. So trying to break down your code into these discrete function blocks is always a great idea. This next line is something that you may not be used to seeing. It was just saying that we're going to use the AGG backend for matplotlib. So we're going to be just saving out PNGs. We don't need to have any kind of interactive window that can pop up. And AGG would be the way to do that. It's also a good idea if you're making many, many plots in series to use the AGG backend to keep from consuming too much RAM on your system. So now below that, this is in the main body of the program, remember, not the function. So the first thing it's going to run is switch back end. Then we're going to use the current time to get channel 8 of CONUS. So we'll get that threads catalog. And then we have a simple loop down here. So for i in range, minus 10 to 0. So that's going to go minus 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on, up to minus 1, including minus 1, but not to 0. So it's going to plot, called plot data set, for the last 10 images in the satellite catalog. So the 10 most recent images is what we're gonna plot. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so we see that that took just a little over two minutes to run. So about two minutes and 11 seconds here and used 95% of the CPU. So that's 95% of one core of my machine. This is a four core machine. So if we were utilizing all of it, that would be 400% roughly. Okay, so let's go back to our script and see what we can do with multiprocessing to utilize more of those cores that are just sitting there. Okay, so back in our script, we'll go to the top. And then multiprocessing is part of the standard library. So I'm going to import 
multiprocessing. This is the Atom editor. You see it's suggesting things for me to save me some keystrokes. Always a good idea to use an editor that has that kind of suggestion and completion for you. And I'm going to import it as MP because we want to save ourselves some typing. Remember, programmers are lazy. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the bottom here. So now we're going to open what's called a pool, a, a pool of workers. And I'm going to use a context manager to do that. So with MP dot pool, and then I need to tell it how many simultaneous processes I would like to have running. In this case, I'm going to choose four. You could have more processes than you have cores. If, for example, you've got a one point in your script where you're waiting on something to happen, uh, then another worker could be working there. In this case, four is going to be about the optimal number. This is something that you just have to play with in your particular application and your machine to figure out what works best. So I'm going to open that as lowercase p pool. And we just need to call this function pool.map. And we're going to say that on the function plot dataset, so our function that we've defined, we're going to map onto that cat.datasets minus 10, colon. So that's going to take the last 10 items in the datasets list and map those onto plot data set, and that will be farmed out to our workers. So if we look at the initial version of the script down here, the serialized version, we're replacing this for i in range minus 10 to 0 with cat data sets minus 10, and then mapping that onto the function plot data set. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this loop. We no longer need it. A couple of things that we should do, always good practice, to when you're not going to submit any more jobs to the pool, we want to go ahead and close it so that those worker processes, once there is no more work for them, will go ahead and shut themselves down and no longer be consuming resources. And then the other tricky thing about parallelized things like this is catching errors and making sure that you wait until all of the processes have finished up before you move on to other maybe serial parts of your program. So that's what pool.join does. Pool.join is going to say we're going to wait until all of the processes, all of the tasks that we've got have been distributed, all the workers have completed their work, and in this case, everything is shut down. So that's just going to say that we want to wait until everything's done. One nice thing about pool.map is it does some of the error handling for us. It's a little bit more advanced topic if you want to do custom error handling or error handling with more complicated things in multiprocessing. But there are some great resources out there for that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then we'll go back to the terminal and run it again. OK, so we're back at the terminal. I'm just going to press the up arrow and run the same command again. Now you'll see that we instantly get four different print outputs from that plot dataset function because four of them are indeed running concurrently on my machine. So we'll go ahead and wait for this to complete. All right, so now if we look, we see that this process this program only took about 53 seconds to run. So again, that's about a factor of you know, 2.4, 2.5 over what we had before. So doing that is more effectively utilizing the resources that our system has and making all of our plots quite a bit faster for us. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.